Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. I believe this video is actually going up Thanksgiving evening, so hopefully you're having a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family, and if not, you at least have this video to cope with. Now, we're, today we're going to be talking about the Vector Paragon 1x16. This is a prism optic, a 1x prism optic, and perhaps one of the best on the market. Now, of course, if you want to help me out personally, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe, as that is all free and does help me out quite a bit. On top of that, go ahead and comment your favorite Thanksgiving dish in the comments down below. Getting into specifics on the Paragon 1x prism, it is, of course, a fixed magnification 1x prism, which is very good for people who have astigmatisms or otherwise can't really use red dots or holographic style optics. This does give them a 1x option that, in this case, is very good. Now, in terms of size and weight, as you can probably tell, it's not particularly large or bulky. It is definitely a micro style prism coming in at just under eight ounces. So it is definitely, I don't think it's the lightest 1X prism on the market, but it is very close and certainly on the lighter end of things. I believe the primary arms 1X prism, which most people probably compare these against, is a little bit lighter depending on how you have the mount set up. Currently, I have this one here in the absolute plus the lower one third riser. And then the primary arms has like a dozen different mounting configurations from super low to super high, whatever you want, basically. Now, as far as materials and construction goes, the body itself is made out of 6061 T6 aluminum, which is perfectly fine. And it actually held up quite well during our drop test. So we'll get into that a little bit later on. If we talk about the mount for just a moment, the mount is one area that I was a little bit skeptical about it because it didn't look all that confidence inspiring however it does use dual cross bolts they're not the largest cross bolts out there but they are at least adequate and the fact that there is two of them does give me a little bit more confidence in the mount itself on the other side you have a pretty large locking block on top of that you also have integrated recoil lugs on the bottom of the mount so while i might like to see larger cross bolts at the end of the day there is enough material here there is enough clamping surface i believe i got the bolts down to 40 inch pounds, which is probably a little bit more than what they recommend. I think it's like 25 inch pounds is what they recommend. I usually go a little bit above that. Now, very nice. This mount is T1 slash T2 compatible. So if you want to throw this on a stupid high riser like the Midwest Industries night vision height back there, you can absolutely do that. And you can have a three inch tall prism if you wanted to do something like that. On top of that, it's obviously compatible with low mounts and anything in between. Again, anything T1, T2 related this will fit on, which is a very nice feature, something that I actually prefer to the primary arms mini ACOG style mounts. T1, T2 mounts are a lot more common, easy to find, and less expensive. Now, getting into controls and adjustments on the optic itself, we of course have exposed windage and elevation. The increments themselves are in one MOA increment. Some people will not like that. However, it absolutely does not matter whatsoever. That means that there is a maximum error of 0.7 MOA through some magical math calculations that you can do and some people have done that for me in the comments down below in the past that's the only reason that i know that again not really a big deal that is again seven inches at a thousand yards that is absolutely nothing will never make you miss a shot the reason you miss a shot with this is not because of the adjustments it's because you suck now on the illumination settings this does have a side loading 2032 battery which is perfectly fine i couldn't find the rated battery life however it's i've had this for a month or two at this point and it hasn't died yet so that's a good sign you do have, of course, plus and minus buttons for adjusting your brightness. You have no night vision settings. As far as I can tell, they get very, very dim to where you basically can't see them unless it's in complete pitch darkness. But it also gets bright enough what I would consider to be a daylight bright. Again, very similar to what you're going to find on the primary arms 1X and 3X Prism. It is very nice, very bright, not quite red dot bright. But as you guys have probably seen through some of the POV footage, definitely provides a very good level of contrast. Now, last thing on the body itself is, of course, have a rear diopter for adjusting the reticle to your eyes. Now, on a 1X prism, you can also use it to adjust the 1X image itself to make that 1X look as natural as possible, because, of course, this is only a 1X optic, so you want to make sure that that 1X looks as flat, as natural as possible. So I have it set a little bit further back than I usually would. The reticle still looks very nice and sharp, but also the image itself looks nearly perfect 1x now getting into glass quality eye relief eye box field of view all that this is a chinese manufactured optic which means that the glass quality is 
perfectly fine. It is going to be very, very similar to the primary arms prisms. Basically, any other Chinese prism on the market is going to be very comparable. It is decent, gives you good contrast, good brightness. It tends to be maybe one small step above like a cheap LPVO, just because it's a lot less compact, or sorry, it's a lot less complex, much more compact. Light transmission tends to be maybe a little bit better. And again, this 1X prism is perfectly acceptable and going to be on par with basically every other Chinese optic out there. Now, getting into eye relief itself on the Paragon, you have a very, very forgiving eye relief. So basically, you can put your eyeball up to the scope and still get a full image, and you can back off a couple feet and still get a reasonable sight picture through the optic. As far as eye relief itself goes, it is very good. Eye box as well. Again, as long as you can get just part of your eye just you can see how far i'm moving my head as long as you can get just part of your eye behind the optic you're going to get a decent sight picture through it meaning that while it is maybe not quite as usable as like a big boxy red dot it is still going to be very very usable especially when we compare it to you know other optics 3x 4x prism so on and so forth so really other than a red dot it's going to be one of the most forgiving one of the most easy optics to use in terms of just getting a sight picture so if you're shooting from odd positions if you're shooting quickly transitioning so on and so forth it's a very very forgiving optic to use now getting into 1x performance on the paragon and what i mean by that is how flat how natural is that image how true to 1x does it actually look because of course, while there might not be very much magnification, you are still looking through a lot of bended light and panes of glass in front of your eye. So it's not a true representation of 1X. Fortunately, the Paragon gets very, very close to being a true 1X. When I have the diopter set up perfectly or the diopter set up perfectly, it looks very, very good. Almost almost perfect 1x there's still a little bit of warping and you can tell if you're moving it around quickly that it's not a true 1x but again when i'm out using this at the place that i normally shoot it looks very very natural meaning that it's again very easy to transition from targets to targets there's not a lot of delay between what your right eye sees and what your left eye is seeing it almost looks like one perfect coalesced image again not perfect but very very close now getting into the reticle on the paragon prism is fortunately very simple. It has a 2MOA dot in the center. Now 2MOA, a etched 2MOA dot looks a thousand times more precise than a 2MOA red dot. So it is very, very fine. So again, if you're trying to print tight groups for zeroing or whatnot, it is very easy to put that dot exactly where you want it. And again, it's a very, very refined point of aim. Again, a 2MOA dot on a red dot or something like that, unless it's at its just minimum brightness setting to where you can barely even see it is nowhere near as precise as an etched 2 MOA dot. Then on the outside of that, you have basically, I believe it's a 65 or a 68 MOA outer circle with some pieces of it cut out, basically giving you a fast reference point up close. Again, very standard to a lot of other optics. I use it basically like a red dot, like I would an EOTech or a Huey or basically any of those other dot, circle dot reticles. It works very well. And again, all we're talking about is a 1X prism. I don't need a lot of other features. I'm probably not going to be using a BDC at 1X. Not that that's a bad feature to have, but it again, in this case, simpler is probably a little bit better. The one thing that it is going to lack when we compare it to a primary arms prism is it's not going to have any sort of auto ranging features or additional detail within the reticle. It basically is again, just a two MOA dot and 65 MOA outer circle. Very standard to a lot of other optics on the market. Now, getting into durability on the Paragon, this is an area where, as I mentioned earlier, I was a little bit concerned with the mount itself being able to retain zero, especially after very sharp impacts. Now, on basically every optic that we test, we do a double drop test, one onto dirt and rocks, and then one onto an AR500 steel plate. So we kind of step up in terms of the difficulty. Most optics either die or fail at the AR500 steel plate. This one here, actually, um, did a lot better than I expected it would do. So we actually ended up doing two shoulder height drops onto dirt and rocks because the first drop that I did landed a little bit funky, so it didn't really count. So I went ahead and did two shoulder height drops onto dirt and rocks. Now, again, before we do all that, we do a five round control group. Now, because I'm just using a 1X prism, I did the control group and this is on a four inch nine millimeter. This is actually the Bear Creek Arsenal Bufferless nine millimeter that I got in from a viewer for review. Spoiler alert, it's actually pretty decent. 
Now, again, we do a five round control group. Again, in this case, it does about 30 yards. Then we went ahead and did two drops onto dirt and rocks, followed by again, another five round group. There was one flyer in there that first round landed like an inch and a half low for some reason, not really sure. Other than that, it was nine rounds in the same hole. And then of course, after that, we step up to the AR-500 steel plate. We do a shoulder height drop on the top of the optic, right onto the plate. It actually smashed in the side of the turret here. I can still use it just fine, but it totally dented in the aluminum here because that's kind of what aluminum does when it meets steel. But again, we do another five round group after that. And we got basically 14 rounds in about an inch and a half. It basically just completely ate out the center of that circle. And I don't really have a problem with that. Now, if we had backed it out a little bit further to say 50 or 100 yards, Maybe you would have seen an inch or two shift in a certain direction. Again, at 30 yards, they basically overlapped perfectly. Now, even if we were to extrapolate that out and say that there was a maximum shift of like one MOA or even two MOA, that's very close to being within the margin of error of the parallax itself. If I get down on the gun in a different way, because of course I get off the gun, drop the gun, then get back down to do a shot from the prone position. So again, one to two MOA shift maximum or basically no shift in zero whatsoever. And of course the optic is still usable, it didn't die. The mount itself did hold up just fine. And if you did want to switch out the mount, in this case, I don't think you need to, it passed the drop test perfectly. But if you did want to switch the mount out to something lower, taller, so on and so forth, you can do that quite easily again because it is a standard T1, T2 style mount. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I've had this optic for a little while now. I've used it on the 556 Mark III behind me with the weird skeletonized stock that will be a future video at some point. I've used it on, of course, this Perfect Arsenal 9mm bufferless system for about 500 rounds of 9mm now. Right now, we're a little bit under 1,000 rounds on the Paragon, but with the drops and everything else, I think that we're at a decent point to talk about it. And as far as performance goes, as I mentioned, the 1X, when you get it set properly for your eyes, distance away from you, diopter, all of that sort of fun stuff, the 1X is very good. Now, something that I like about this optic that I like more than the primary arms 1X is because the rear ocular section is a little bit larger, you almost get kind of like a larger effect, even though the field of view is about the same. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Field of view is only 76 feet at 100 yards, which would be really, really bad if it wasn't a 1X prism. I believe that is actually basically identical to the primary arms 1X prism as well. It's fairly standard, about 75 to 80 feet for a 1X prism, because again, you don't really need field of view for a 1X only optic, because again, it's just basically whatever you can see through the front of that tube, and it is a very good, very flat 1X image. Now again, because the rear ocular section is a little bit larger, it has the appearance of that larger image, more light transmission. I'm not really sure what the actual effect of that is, but it makes the image itself, even though it's the same image, maybe look a little bit better. So kind of like going from a 18 inch monitor to a 32 inch monitor is the effect, even though it's the same image, it looks bigger and it looks a little better, a little natural, more natural in my opinion. So again, I do like this 1X performance actually more than what you get off the primary arm 1X. So as far as performance goes, it's really good. I don't really have much to complain about at all. Now the main downsides to this 1X prism are gonna be that it is a 1X prism and you can get basically the same performance out of a red dot and a red dot is gonna be a little bit easier for most people, much better battery life, brighter illumination, so on and so forth. But again, it's really gonna depend on what you're looking for. If you're somebody who needs a prism for your astigmatism or something like that, then it is a good way to go and this is a very good option. I'm very happy with, again, its performance. Its durability was perfectly fine. On this optic, I don't even think there's a reason to switch out the mount, again, unless you want to, because the included mount is perfectly fine. Main downsides are gonna be at the end of the day that it is still a 1X prism and has all of those standard downsides. It's gonna be very close to as usable as a red dot, but not quite. So if you don't need a prism, just go with the red dot anyways. Or if you're into some sort of like end of the world apocalypse scenario, this does not require batteries because it does again have an etched reticle. So that's about it for me on the Vector Paragon 1x16 prism optic. Overall, again, it does all the prism things pretty well. If you're looking for a 1X prism, this is a very good way to go. This or the primary arm is 1S, 1X SLX are probably gonna be your two go-to options. This one here, I believe, is a little bit cheaper. Uh, 199 MSRP, and then it's probably on sale right now for less than that. So again, if you like that sort of thing, it's probably gonna be a good option to look at, to consider. But at the end of the day, that is, of course, up to you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think of the Paragon in the comments down below. And with all that out of the way, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.